I am very excited to see the film. I have read the book when I was in college in New York. That is one of the first books that I read as I joined college. And it was a very impressionable time in my life. And I have some, some things have retained in my heart from this, uh, from this autobiography. And it's one of the important books you know, that one has come across. And I'm going to reread the book now that Sushmita Mukherjee has gifted the book to me again. And I look forward to rereading it because now after that many years, how is it going to impact me now? What am I going to make of it now? And uh, his life is, of course, uh, something that needs to be seen by everyone. Fabulous. You know, it's a real, uh, it's, I would say, a rude awakening in many ways because, uh, you know, we always like to ape people from uh, the West, you know, and uh, it's a very humbling feeling when you have uh, a master from our part of the world, you know, and an Eastern master when it comes to uh, his philosophy, who became a giant going across to the West and conquering the Western world as early as the turn of the uh, you know, 19th century, the 18th century. It's, uh, it's a very humbling experience. It shows that there is a part to uh, self-realization and some of the techniques uh, you know, which you see in the movie and which are spoken about is uh, quite unbelievable. You know, people say you know, that you live in the modern day and age, in a, in a, you, know, you experience a life of materialistic stuff, artificial stuff. You know, you really don't hit reality the way it should. But I'm sure when you when you watch this film, you know, nothing is impossible. If you can practice those techniques, you will realize the path to self-realization. You know, there's also a saying always said, live in the now. What is the now? It is reality. You know, when you get keep getting a reality check, you will know how to live in the now and not think too far ahead. Not think too far behind. Well, sir, fantastic sir, movie. Sir, sir, best, uh, best part I, mean, no, I thought uh, the best part, which I said later on, was uh, how a man, a human being, you know, just with a relationship, you know, like a guru shishya relationship with them, you know, through a relationship with his guru, Yukteswarji, could travel that far, you know, single handedly into the United States with nothing in hand, no baggage whatsoever, and then conquer the West just on sheer self-belief and uh, the power of self-realization. Unbelievable. cinema hall on the 17th of June I want to see it uh, with a uh, you know with with everybody there of the public I'm very grateful a film like this has been made I think it's very important that this sort of energy we put out into the world that we are living in today uh, a spiritually charged um, energy that belongs comes from a great realized human being is something we all need more than ever today you know uh, because the world is just being and especially through the medium of cinema which is the great um, you know the biggest the most powerful medium of entertainment and of reaching out to people uh, so it's just so so lovely that Yoganan ji pe ek film ban rahi hai ban gayi hai aur wo ab cinema halls mein aayegi and um, he has been a great spiritual power for the west for all these years it's a pity that we haven't followed him as powerfully and as passionately but hopefully things will change and we really need this sort of energy coming into our space today, our space of the world. Very, very necessary. Uh, Ma'am, it's an arts and biography thing. So do you think a uh, life of yogi can create a magic on box office? Yes, I think so. You know, uh, the, the interesting thing is that somebody like Steve Jobs used to read the autobiography of a yogi every year. And apparently when he passed away, 
copy the autobiography of a yogi were distributed to people at his funeral you know um i know a lot of uh, the greatest filmmakers the most successful hollywood filmmakers have studied the autobiography of a yogi like a bible every year if nothing uh, at least people who are commercially inclined very much in the material world can realize that there is a balance between materiality and the spirit and you you can't kill the spirit in search of materiality materiality otherwise that all the richness riches of the world mean nothing if you're spiritually um, not realized नहीं आप योगा को ट्रेंड नहीं बोल सकते हैं ट्रेंड हाँ ट्रेंड लोग बोलते हैं क्योंकि जो नहीं पत पता फिर को लगता रहे कुछ खास लोग उसको फॉलो कर रहे हैं तो वो ट्रेंड है लेकिन जो लोग योगा करते हैं उनके लिए वो एक बहुत गहरी आत्मदर्शन है जिसे कहते हैं अभिमुख होना अपने आप से सम्मुख होना तो ये ट्रेंड नहीं कह सकते योगा को जिसने योगा का पथ पकड़ लिया वो भाग्यशाली है जिसने नहीं पकड़ा हो उसे कुछ जन्म लेने पड़ेंगे समझने के लिए कि मैं कौन हूँ क्या हूँ कहाँ से आया और क्यों आया हूँ और आगे कहाँ जा रहा हूँ दी अर्बन नीड्स इट इवन मोर बिकॉज अर्बन पीपल आर सो डिसकनेक्टेड विद द नेचर दे डिसकनेक्टेड विद देर ओन बॉडीज दे डिसकनेक्टेड विद विद ईच आदर हजबेंड्स ओन कनेक्ट टू वाइज वाइज ओन कनेक्ट टू हजबेंड्स देर हजबेंड्स रिस्पेक्टिव हजबेंड्स आई मीन um children parents everywhere where you see today the malaise of urban life is a deep disconnect first of all with yourself and naturally when it's with yourself then you are disconnected with every other human being around you so i think the urban needs a spiritual um connect more than people who are um, you know happily living closer to nature